What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Eric and this right behind me is my garage. Now in today's video what I'm going to be doing is replacing the galley gasket on my 2008 G37. Now in the last video I did let you guys know that the vehicle was running a lot better but all of a sudden that just took a 180 turn and the car just is not staying on anymore so I can't sell the vehicle like this obviously so I'm going to go ahead and take it apart and see if the galley gaskets are blown. Um, hopefully the vehicle is fixed so that I can sell it. If not, we're going to have to take a loss on this vehicle. So if you guys are interested in this video, make sure that you guys watch the whole entire video so that you guys can also replace this on your vehicle. By now, you guys probably already know what that issue is, and that it is when the gaskets inside of the engine behind the timing cover um, blow and it loses pressure and sometimes you can get a p0021 or a p011 p0011 and sometimes you can also get a low oil pressure code now on this vehicle the only code that i'm getting is a p0021 um, and a misfire but the misfire is being triggered by the other code the p0021 so in order to replace this you have to remove the whole front end of the vehicle out of the way so in, uh, that includes the bumper the headlights the radiator the ac condenser you have to remove all the pulleys in front of the timing cover um, because what we're going to get to is basically behind the cover right there so it's very involved and very e extensive as far as you know fixing this so the gasket itself is like twenty dollars but the labor that goes into this is just out of this world so in today's video we're going to go ahead and get that taken care of now as you guys can see i did already jack up the vehicle so what i'm going to do is just remove the whole front end the bumper and the headlights uh, i'm not going to be as detailed because it's just a few fasteners in the way and clips so uh, if you guys are going to attempt to do this you guys should know how to remove that so we're just going to skip all that times um, time lapse all this and basically remove everything out of the way As you guys can see, I did remove a few parts out of the way. Um, now, I did want to stop the recording here so that I can show you guys what needs to be done uh, to remove these AC lines. So I did remove the headlight so that I have enough access to get these guys out of here. Now, I've seen on, on YouTube that some people go ahead and cut this out right here uh, so that they don't have to disconnect it, but I feel like that's kind of silly. I would rather just disconnect these lines right here, these are quick disconnect lines for the AC. Now it's important to note that you guys need to uh, drain out your coolant system. On this vehicle it has already been done, the AC doesn't even work so I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that. And then there's a few more things that I need to remove, electrical connections, uh, I need to remove the hoses over here, drain the coolant and then I'm going to pull this whole core support forward so that I have access to the front of the engine. So my brother's here, he's actually going to go ahead and help me out. He's actually done this on his G37, um, so we're going to tackle this together. So we got the quick disconnect AC lines out of the way. They were kind of a pain in the butt because I didn't have the proper tool. Uh, well, I had the proper tool, just not the proper leverage, but you, as you guys can see, disconnected both of the lines out of the way. Now, the only thing kind of holding this in place is just some fasteners, uh, the power steering hose that we need to remove out of the way. And then we also need to remove uh, these connectors right here for the fan and the radiator hose. I need to drain out the coolant. And then after I do that, just got to remove the uh, assemblies in the front. So like the power steering, and the AC compressor.
This part of the video, I accidentally forgot to turn on the microphone, but basically what we were doing here is removing the crankshaft bolt. This is a 19 millimeter, um, and I am using a special 19 millimeter socket to remove this bolt. I'll leave it in the description so that you guys can purchase it. Without this tool, um, it's basically gonna be impossible uh, to remove this 19 millimeter fastener. So this is the socket that I was using. Um, as you guys can tell, it's a lot fatter and bulkier than your standard 19 millimeter socket. Um, you do have to use this to get this out. Um, there's not really any way around it. And um, I was just using a regular uh, half inch electric impact to remove it. Uh, once you do this, your pulley should come free. So now that we took a quick little break, you guys can see that there is a few things in the way of the timing cover. So we do need to remove the alternator, kind of just push it off to the side, along with the power steering pump and all of these pulleys. Um, we also need to remove the AC compressor out of the way. So there is a few fasteners that hold it down. Um, if you removed a G35 compressor, it's very similar. There's two bolts on the side, and then there is, it looks like from what it looks like here, is another two on the bottom. Um, and then we also need to remove our dipstick out of the way. Once we remove that, it's just a matter of small little 10 millimeter fasteners that hold the timing cover in place, along with some of these bigger ones. I think these are 14, uh, the ones that are right here. You can kind of see them. Uh, so we need to remove those as well and uh, some grounds out of the way and more electrical connections. And then uh, we do need to remove the uh, lower pan out of the way because there's, I believe, two fasteners that hold it from the bottom. So they hold the timing cover from the bottom. So you do need to remove your pan and drain your oil, which is what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started on this and then continue. <laughs> So we did a little bit more work now uh, the only thing that's holding this timing cover on is just a few 14 millimeter fasteners and a few uh, 10 millimeter fasteners that go around the timing cover um, i also need to drop the oil pan to remove those fasteners that go through the bottom of the oil uh, through the timing cover um, and then once i have that removed we should be able to pry this timing cover out of the way All right, guys, so um, I did remove the uh, lower pan out of the way. I removed two 12 millimeter fasteners that hold the timing cover in place. Um, and then we did remove all the 10 millimeters that are around uh, the timing cover along with some 14 millimeters. Uh, right now, what I'm gonna do is just pry it off slowly. If you guys feel any resistance, don't continue because there's probably a bolt somewhere. So uh, get a flathead and just start slowly prying all around the timing cover so that you guys can remove it. Once we get this out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and inspect the gala gasket and remove it as well. All right, guys, so um, as you guys can see, I did remove the timing cover. Well, me and my brother did. Um, and I am kind of disappointed because I was hoping that the galley gasket was going to be torn, uh, which is not on this vehicle. And I'm disappointed because I was thinking that this was causing that check engine light. So I'm still going to be replacing the galley gasket, but it's unfortunate because that means this was fine and, you know, we went through the hassle of removing everything you know to figure this out but it, it's okay it's gonna make a good video for you guys i don't know what else could be causing this issue so i'm just gonna go ahead and uh, remove the chain tensioner and install these gaskets so yeah before we remove any of the chains out of the way um, we're gonna go ahead and time the vehicle so put it in top dead center i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how that looks like in a second and then we're gonna remove this uh, tensioner right here and then it's gonna allow for us to get uh, past it to remove that lower um, guide and um, the gasket basically. So
So now that my brother got the uh, timing chain guide tensioner out of the way, we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, covers to the galley gaskets. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a good example of how they look when they're blown, but I'll put some pictures up here so that you guys can see what you guys will be looking for. So um, there's just some Phillips screws that we need to remove, and then the cover should come off. So what my brother is doing right here is removing those uh, Phillips screws out of the way. You have to use a number three screwdriver from what he uh, is telling me because uh, these can get stripped in there. So uh, just make sure that if it's not on there right that you don't, don't try to remove it. They're tight, huh? Yeah, these these are actually under pretty tight, which is actually not very common. I guess these over time can get loose. And then the timing cover is out. No. So after further analysis, my brother found out that, I guess, this right here, there was a bolt that was in tight, which was this bolt right here on the galley gasket. Stupid camera focus. Anyways, so right here, uh, you can see that on the back of this, there is staining on the on the cover right here. So he's thinking that maybe the oil was getting through, which it shows that there's signs of that. This bolt on this right on this side right here was not tight at all. So maybe the oil was leaking out through here. And this is actually the side where I'm getting the P021. P0021. So fingers crossed that this is actually what the issue is. It wasn't as bad as any other G37 that I've seen, but something simple like this could cause it to uh, run rough. So this one right here is the updated gasket. Um, this one has metal inside of it. Um, let me show you the part number. My brother said uh, that if you ask for a G35 gasket, it's the exact same thing. Um, and you guys can actually buy it from Nissan. Uh, this is the part number right here. So that's the part number for the top one. And then the bottom one. So yeah, this is the part number for the bottom one. Um, now, I did buy this kit from Z1 Motorsports, but you can actually buy it from Nissan if you ask for a G35 galley gasket set. They don't sell it to you for the G37s, but my brother said it's the exact same part number and it, it's going to fit exactly the same. So, we're going to go ahead and put this on there. I'm going to use new bolts, new Allen bolts to fasten these guys down and we have to torque them down to 12 foot pounds. All right, guys, so as you guys can see, I did clean up the mating surfaces on the engine side of the timing cover. Uh, I'm going to finish up doing the other side um, right here. So I'm using a small razor blade and some scotch bright pad to clean the mating surfaces. Once I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together, um, including the new gaskets for the galley gasket. So it's the next morning. I have pretty much everything cleaned and ready to go. So I'm gonna install my galley gaskets uh, inside of the G37. Now, um, I did wanna let you guys know that I did leave the uh, galley gasket covers uh, soaking in some cleaner overnight because the paper gasket does tend to stick to the metal and it's kinda a pain in the butt to remove it. So if you're doing this job, let them soak for at least a, a day and you'll see that it's a lot easier to get that stuff off.
so if you buy the kit from z1 motorsports you're gonna also get a hardware kit so these bolts are allen uh allen head bolts and you're gonna go ahead and use these to replace the phillips screws so make sure that you guys torque all these fasteners to 12 foot pounds So I got the gaskets installed. I need to torque everything down, uh, but this is pretty much how uh, you put these guys in place. Z1 did provide two additional Allen head fasteners just in case you lose one. Um, I need to put one over here, which uh, it's kind of tricky, but you can get it on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put everything back together and um, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that our timing is correct before we seal it up. All right guys, so this is the last time that we are going to see the timing chain and all the parts in here because we're getting ready to install the front timing cover. So my brother's putting a bead of RTV all over so that we make sure everything seals. And we're actually using Honda Bond on on this vehicle because he says that this is really good Honda Bond. So, and if for those that are asking, we did replace the um, crankshaft seal, so we're gonna install that at the end. But right now, we're just focusing on putting some of this gasket maker all over the place. The important thing that you guys want to keep in mind is that all your surfaces needs to be dry um, from any oil or any any debris. Take your time when you guys are doing this because you don't want to do this again. So we are putting on the timing cover. As you guys can see, there's gasket maker all over the place. What you want to make sure is that you line up the dowel pins on the bottom to the back of the engine. So once that lines up, everything should basically fall into place just like how you see right here. And it's on. So go ahead and just put a few fasteners in just to make sure it's held in place. Um, and then make sure you guys torque all these guys down. We're further along. Uh, my brother just finished installing the crankshaft seal and um, we are going to put on the oil pan next and then after this we're going to go ahead and put everything back together, all the accessories and we're going to go ahead and give it a crank, see if it turns on and uh, see if our issue is fixed. So we have done a ton of work off camera. Um, as you guys can see, for the most part, we have the engine back together. I did go ahead and put the oil pan on and then I did go ahead and put some oil in it. So what I'm gonna do is turn on the vehicle for like five, 10 seconds, and then I'm just gonna make sure that it's running okay. It's probably gonna run like crap, but I just wanna make sure that we didn't make any mistakes so that we can continue. Careful. Start it slow. Okay, stop. <laughs> Fucking Carlos. Uh, well, the car seems to be turning on fine, so. I forgot, you're just an automatic. I forgot yeah, for, totally forgot. <laughs> it was an automatic. <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry I'm not recording as much, but uh, basically we are just putting everything back together. We got the uh, AC compressor in. We're finishing installing the power steering pump with the brackets. We put on the tensioner bracket on. Um, we're going to finish putting on the alternator on and then once we do that basically the whole front end of the vehicle goes on and then we put everything back together hey guys so it's the next morning 
behind me, the G37 is pretty much put back together. I am kind of disappointed because we did all that work and I'm still getting that stupid P0021. So that means that the galley gasket was not messed up. That means all that work we did was basically for nothing. Well, I guess not for nothing because you guys have an awesome video now if you guys are needing to do this on your vehicle. Uh, but it's just annoying because I guess, you know, things like this happen and I guess it's never really happened to me until now. And it's kind of hitting me hard because this is probably the first vehicle that I'm not going to make a profit on because I don't think I'm going to get much for the car in the current condition. If that core does not go away and the car doesn't run perfect, it's not going to be worth much. It has a lot of miles, so that's frustrating. But this is the game that I'm playing, I guess. This is the game that I'm doing. Uh, there's times where, you know, you're going to get lucky and you're going to make a really good amount of money flipping cars. And then there's times like this where you can't figure out an issue and you're going to take a loss. So, yeah, things did not go as planned in this video, but I'm glad that at least the vehicle is not leaking and the vehicle is running. So, now, if you guys did like today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys all in my next one. Peace out.